let's review some of that new terminology uh, that we brought in. We have our common fixed costs and our traceable fixed costs. Let's start with the common first. These are fixed costs that supports the operations of, and I underlined it here because it's important, more than one segment. If a segment were to be eliminated, that fixed cost would not be. So they are not assigned to segments. Now there's some discussion uh, among management accountants that say, well, there should be some allocation of the common costs to the segments because the segments, if all the segments were to disappear, all the common costs would disappear. So if we charge it to some of the segments, uh, it, it's a better representation of the profitability of the segments. And there are others that argue, well, no, it's not because a segment may be profitable until it has to burden the common fixed costs. Once it's burdened with the common fixed costs, it may turn unprofitable. So that there may be a motivation to get rid of that segment, but the common costs that were arbitrarily assigned to it would not disappear. And without them assigned, they were profitable anyways so that you would actually have a company that's worse off, it would make a terrible decision. A traceable fixed cost has one test. If the segment were eliminated, the fixed cost would be as well. Either the moment it was eliminated or shortly thereafter, the fixed costs that were, that were traceable to that segment would disappear. If it doesn't disappear when the segment disappears, it wasn't a traceable cost, it was a common cost. Now, traceable can be broken down into two other categories, discretionary and committed. And discretionary traceable fixed costs are under manager's control or under management's control. Committed, I just put the word not, not arrow under management control. So one is, one is not. So let's, uh, let's have a look at what that looks like now when we go to the contribution format income statement. And I've redone it here except I have not continued on and taken off the common costs. I've just dealt with the traceable costs. So let's see what we have. We have our revenues minus our variable costs equal our contribution margin. There we go. That's fairly straightforward. Less our fixed costs. Now, in the previous screens, what I've done is I've just, just taken off traceable fixed costs to get to the segment margin. But here I'm breaking it down by traceable discretionary and traceable committed because this number in the middle becomes important. Follow me here. Once we have our, our contribution margin, we will take off our, discre our traceable discretionary costs. These are costs that are under management control. From that, we get something called the segment performance margin. Keep in mind, why do we do reporting? We do it for performance measurement and control. So if we're measuring the performance of a manager, we, it is not fair to measure that manager's performance over costs of which the manager has no control, like a committed cost. Even though it's traceable to this manager's segment, to this manager's division, that manager may have no control over that cost. Further, let's look at a timeline here. And let's say at point X, the current manager who was running the division up to that point is kicked out. You're a loser. Get lost. You're unemployed. And a new guy is brought in. He's the hero. He is the hero. And he is going to go forward. Well, now, since there are discretionary fixed costs, this manager can look at them and say, well, this was useless. Let's get rid of that. This doesn't make sense. Let's get rid of that. But the committed ones, once a corporation signs a contract, it's a valid contract. There may be some committed fixed costs where the new manager says, well, those costs shouldn't be here, but there's nothing we can do about it right now. Though the, We've committed to it. There's nothing we can do. The manager, the new manager, should not be held responsible for the decisions of the loser. The hero should be, should be evaluated based on the segment performance margin here. That's why this is the big reason why you'd... Uh, separate your traceable fixed costs into a discretionary and a committed because if you're going to make a decision about how to fix your, your traceable fixed cost, you can really only do it at the level of the discretionary fixed costs, not the committed fixed costs. Okay, so we have this new number now called a segment performance margin. So you get it. It is, it is our contribution margin less our traceable discretionary costs. 
fixed cost to get us to the segment performance margin. From that, we'll take off the traceable committed, and we end up with our segment margin, and that's as far as we go in the segment. Uh, we move over in the uh, uh, contribution margin, continue down under the total column, then that's where our common costs, common fixed costs would be. So there we go. Let's move over to my green writing here. And let's talk about our traceable fixed costs again. I've already mentioned this when we looked at the spreadsheet. Uh, not the spreadsheet, but the uh, the exhibit from the uh, textbook. A traceable uh, a fixed cost at one level, for instance, product A and B, there may be X, there may be a traceable fixed cost that if product B disappeared, this entire cost would disappear. It's a traceable fixed cost. Traceable at one level may become common at another level. So when we break B down into sales of East and West, whatever the cost here was, we might find that half of that cost belong, can be traced directly to West, a quarter of it can be traced directly to East, but a quarter of this cost, directly related to B, cannot be attributed to either East or West. It may become common at some lower level. So a quarter of the costs up here become common fixed costs at some lower level. So let me give you an example. Product B advertising. Uh, all of X is traceable to B. We know that. There it is. 100% of X is traceable to B. But from B, a quarter of it is traceable to the East Coast sales, let's say. And half of it is traceable to West Coast sales. But another quarter of it is for national advertising that is neither attributable to the West or the East. In other words, if you got rid of the West, you'd still have the national advertising. If you got rid of the East, you'd still have the national advertising. But if you got rid of product B, you'd no longer have East, West, or national advertising. So just because a cost is traceable to one segment, once you break down B into its own segments, it may not be 100% traceable to each of these segments. There may be a portion that's common to that, uh, uh, to that breakdown. We get that? Beautiful. Let's move on. Well, a discussion of discretionary and committed fixed costs is a nice segue into our next discussion, which is responsibility centers. And a responsibility center, broadly defined, is a segment whose manager has responsibility over cost and or profit and or investment. The better you are, by the way, the closer you get to running an investment center. Anyways, let's have a look at what we have here. A cost center. What is that? The manager of a cost center has control over costs, but not revenues or investment. In other words, it doesn't generate any revenues. And the manager of the cost center doesn't make any investment decisions like expansion and new equipment and, 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 and new buildings and new locations, etc. So things like information technology, IT. Somebody's got to run the computer network, right? HR. HR doesn't generate any profits. They simply just hire. They're a cost center. Logistics. So we can think of uh, a, a warehouse, for instance, that uh, simply just inventories um, final goods. Well, they don't generate sales. They just ship based on getting a sale, but they just ship. So it really is just a cost center. A profit center, on the other hand, is, uh, the manager has control over costs and revenues but not investment. So we can think of a retail location. Somebody, a manager who's running a, a particular uh, Walmart, for example, the store manager. Well, that store manager is responsible for the revenues of the store and the costs of running that store, but certainly doesn't make any investment decisions about where to build a new store. So that would be considered a profit center. Whereas an investment center at the far end of the spectrum, the manager has control over costs, and revenues and can make investment decisions. So we can think of the uh, East Coast manager for Hilton uh, is responsible for the revenues in, in his territory or her territory and the costs of running those hotels, but is also responsible for deciding right there. That's where we'll build a new hotel. So with, uh, uh, with these different types of responsibility centers, uh, how do we measure the performance since we've all, we already know how to do it with the profit center, we have the contribution format income statement. We know how to break down costs into traceable fixed costs and common fixed costs. So we can get very close to measuring the performance of a profit center. But what happens when we get to an investment center and the manager 
has responsibility over investment. That leads us right into our next learning objective. I'll see you in that video.